Welcome. In this video segment, we're going to be talking about our third quantum number. So they're given by letters. I know that's weird, but these are solutions to Schrodinger's equation. And the third one is called the magnetic um, quantum number. And unfortunately, it's also called an orbital. I, I really like that a lot of places are shifting to the word cloud. Um, now, each sub-level contains one or more clouds or orbitals that are regions of high probability of finding electrons. The M sub L indicates the orientation of these. And we're finally talking about the wave function squared, that region in space where there's a 90% probability of finding an electron with a given energy, something we've been building up to. And it relates, the number of orbitals relates to the sublevel L. I'm going to find that each orbital can only hold two electrons. Okay, the surface of the orbital is drawn to represent an area um, where each electron can be found 90% of the time. And often in models, we're simply going to use a line to depict that um, orbital. So for example, the S sublevel has one, so we draw one line. The P sublevel has three, didn't leave myself much room here, three, and so we would draw three lines. The D has five, I hope you're catching the pattern, so we're going to draw five lines. Sometimes people will draw boxes, sometimes circles, I personally find lines are the easiest. An S has seven, one, three, five, seven. Stupid people died first. One, three, five, seven. And again, the beauty of the periodic table is you can memorize this, but you'll also be able to figure it out from the periodic table. I hope you would guess that if we had a G sublevel, we would have nine orbitals. And that's what, if you've watched my previous videos, um, I showed you the winter orbital that showed um, those orbitals and sublevels as pictures. So let's kind of summarize this and see what we get. Energy level one has one sublevel, it only has an S. Okay, and that S has one line, two electrons can go in each orbital, so there's only two electrons in the sublevel and two electrons in the energy level. If we look at energy level two, we can have an S and a P. The S has one orbital. Each orbital holds two electrons. The P has three orbitals. Each holds two for a total of six electrons in that sublevel, eight in the energy level. So do you notice, and you'll see multiple choice questions on this, so be really careful. How many electrons are in an orbital? Well, there's two. I can tell you I have a 4s um, electron, and there's, there's two electrons in an orbital. So if it says how many electrons are in a 4s orbital? Two. How many electrons are in the 6p orbital? Two. So they'll try to mess you up that way. How many electrons are in a sublevel? How many electrons are in an energy level? So be really careful um, what the question is asking. Because uh, they'll, you know, they want to see if you understand what you're talking about. Energy level three has S, P, and D. So one, three, and five, two electrons, two, four, six for the P, two, four, six, eight, ten for the D for a total of 18. In an earlier video, I showed the formula, two and squared for determining that. 
And now let's take a look at this one. 4 has S, P, D, and F. 1, 3, 5, and 7. Two electrons in that orbital, 2, 4, 6. In the P sublevel, two electrons per orbital, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. In the D sublevel, two electrons per orbital, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 in an F sublevel. And if we added all that up, we'd have 24, 32 electrons in that energy level. Okay, so hopefully this gives you an idea of how we're now building up really a picture of that location or that region in space where there's a 90% chance of finding an electron with a given energy. And in the next video, we will see we get a bonus fourth quantum number for the location of electron. Thanks for joining me.